In a quiet, dim corner of my room, beneath a layer of moist soil and glass, a silent miracle began. No trumpets, no thunder, just stillness. That's where she lived, the Queen Ant. To most, she's tiny and significant. But to me, she was the beginning of something extraordinary. She arrived alone, tucked carefully in a test tube, carrying nothing but her body and instinct. There were no followers, no workers, no warmth. Just her, a hollow space, and a future not yet written. As I observed her, something clicked inside me. This was more than a science project. This was witnessing life raw and unfiltered. In her solitude, she moved slowly, cautiously. Her antennae twitched at the slightest vibration. She was alert, always calculating. Her movements were deliberate, but not frantic. She knew what she had to do. She began laying eggs, small translucent dots, barely visible to the naked eye. They looked like nothing, yet everything rested on them. Each one was a thread in the web of a future colony. I watched her care for them with such precision. She gently cleaned them, rolled them with her legs into neat piles and made sure they stayed moist. It was almost maternal. And yet she wasn't acting out of love, not in the human sense, but from an ancient instinct deeply encoded in her body. Nature has its own logic, its own way of saying, create, persist, thrive. For days, sometimes weeks, she remained alone. There were no workers to help her, no one to protect or provide. Her energy was rationed, carefully used sparingly. She even absorbed the remnants of her wings for nutrients, recycling her past as fuel for the future. It struck me there's something profoundly poetic about that giving up flight to build a kingdom. The room around me faded as I stared into that small habitat. Time slowed. In the silence, I could almost hear her breathing, or maybe it was just my own breath sinking with hers. I started wondering how often do we dismiss the tiny, the quiet, the unseen. This queen in her isolation carried the weight of an empire not yet born. There's no drama here, no cinematic climax. Just the slow, deliberate work of laying the foundation for something bigger. And somehow that made it more powerful. It's easy to think of ants as pests, nuisances. But when you see them from the start, from this moment, you realize how magnificent their story really is. The colony doesn't start with case. It starts with silence. It starts with one. And that one is a queen. Days turned into weeks and the quiet glass world remained still. Until one morning, I noticed something different. The eggs had changed. They were no longer just tiny pearl-like specks. They had darkened, slightly swollen, almost pulsing with life. The air inside the small habitat felt charged like the calm before a storm. Something was coming. Then it happened. One of the eggs twitched, barely noticeable, but enough to make me lean closer. And in that moment, I witnessed something both fragile and monumental, the birth of the first larva. It wasn't pretty in the traditional sense, a small, pale creature wriggling awkwardly, blind and helpless. But to me, it was pure beauty, raw, unfiltered life struggling to exist. The queen immediately sprang into action. Her movements became sharper, faster. She touched the newborn with her antennae cleaned. It adjusted it carefully among the others. There was tenderness in that act, though born from instinct, not emotion. Over the next few days, more larvae appeared. The once silent chamber now had movement, soft shifting waves of new life. The queen became tireless. She groomed them, fed them with secretions from her body, ensuring each one had the strength to survive. Watching her, I realized she wasn't just creating life, she was maintaining it, nurturing it, shaping it. As I observed her through the glass, I found myself fascinated by the rhythm of it all. There was a calm precision in how she moved. No wasted motion, no panic, only focus. In that tiny space beneath layers of earth and condensation, she was building the foundation of an empire one mouthful of care at a time. Then one day the larvae stopped moving as much. They began to curl, wrapping themselves tightly. I thought something was wrong until I realized they were transforming. The first pupae had formed pale cocoons signaling the next phase of life. The queen slowed her activity, now guarding them constantly. Every so often, she'd rearrange them, keeping their environment perfect. And then came the moment I had been waiting for. The first worker ant emerged. Smaller than the queen, darker faster. Her movements were quick, purposeful, full of energy. She cleaned herself briefly, then immediately turned to help her mother cleaning the nest, tending to the remaining pupae. There was no hesitation, no learning curve. 
It was as if she had been waiting her whole life for this role. Watching her, I felt something stir inside me, a mix of pride, wonder, and awe. The queen was no longer alone. The colony had taken its first breath. This was the first miracle from isolation came community, from silence came movement, from one came many. That tiny worker, only a few millimeters long, carried with her the spirit of an entire civilization yet to unfold. And I knew from that moment the story had just begun. The birth of the first worker ant marked a turning point, not just for the colony, but for me as well. Up until that moment, everything had depended on the queen. Every breath, every movement, every fragile life form in that tiny glass world had been her burden to carry alone. But now for the first time she had help, and help arrived not with fanfare, but with purpose. That first worker didn't waste a second. She cleaned the nest, cared for the remaining pupae, and began clearing out debris. It was like a switch had flipped instinct, overriding inexperience. No training, no trial and error. She simply knew. And not just knew what to do, but why it mattered. Soon more workers emerged. The pupae casing would twitch, then split open like a curtain, and another daughter would step into the world. Some lighter in color, soft and new. Others already hardened their bodies darker with age and readiness. With each arrival, the pace quickened. The colony was no longer a slow rhythm of solitude. It became a heartbeat. I watched with fascination as the team began transforming their environment. They carved tiny tunnels into the substrate, expanded chambers, created ventilation pockets. They repositioned eggs, larvae, and pupae based on humidity and warmth. What looked like chaos at first glance was actually stunning precision, every ant playing a role in perfect harmony. What struck me the most was the silence. Unlike humans, there were no spoken words, no commands, no leadership structures as we know them. The organization was biological, almost spiritual. They operated like one single organism with a million legs all moving towards survival. And the queen, she changed too. She no longer moved around constantly, no longer needed to balance care with caution. Surrounded by a growing circle of daughters, she retreated to the center of the nest, her focus returning fully to laying eggs. She had done her part, and now she could rest in the fortress built around her. One afternoon, I saw something that nearly brought tears to my eyes. A worker ant approached the queen not to serve, but to groom her. She gently cleaned the queen's legs and antennae, then curled beside her for a moment before scurrying away. It was such a small gesture, yet so deeply symbolic. A sign of loyalty, of connection. Day by day, the colony grew bolder. Some workers began scouting the surface of the enclosure. They returned with pieces of substrate, bits of leftover food I had placed nearby. The nest was no longer a fragile beginning. It was becoming a living city, expanding with every sunrise. It was humbling. I wasn't just raising ants. I was witnessing the birth of an entire society built from scratch, powered by cooperation. And to think it all started with one queen and one egg. At first glance, the nest looked chaotic ants rushing in every direction, colliding, overlapping, weaving through tunnels and chambers like scattered pixels in a broken screen. But the longer I watched, the more I realized this wasn't chaos. It was orchestrated precision disguised in movement. Every ant knew its role. Without a leader shouting orders or a master plan drawn out, the colony functioned with startling efficiency. Some workers focused solely on tending to the young. They carefully picked up tiny larvae in their mandibles, repositioning them into areas where humidity and temperature were optimal. It wasn't random. They tested the environment constantly with their antennae adjusting the nursery like seasoned architects who just happened to be a few millimeters tall. Others were janitors, removing waste cleaning, dead organic matter, even carrying out fallen sisters to designated refuse zones far from the queen's chamber. This wasn't just tidiness, it was disease prevention, hygiene maintenance, the kind of biological foresight that would put many human systems to shame. Then there were the foragers, the brave few who ventured beyond the nest out into the artificial landscape I had created for them. They climbed cotton bridges, navigated damp tunnels, and discovered every crumb I placed within their range. These ants didn't work alone. They laid pheromone trails, invisible scent maps for others to follow. Within minutes, a single discovery turned into a bustling food highway with ants moving in perfect two-way traffic, sharing the load of a dead insect or a drop of sugar water. Back inside the nest, traffic never stopped. Ants flowed like blood through capillaries, never colliding, never hesitating. 
Each step, each movement was a product of chemical signals, instincts, honed by millions of years of evolution. They didn't question the system, they were the system. And in the heart of it all, the queen rested. She had become a symbol, unmoving yet essential. Protected by layers of loyal workers, she was surrounded by her purpose. Eggs, hundreds of them, clustered like tiny pearls in the soil. Her entire world was her legacy and her daughters were ensuring it would flourish. Sometimes I'd find myself leaning in so close that my breath fogged up the glass. Watching them, I felt like an outsider, peeking into a foreign civilization. They didn't know I was there. They didn't need me to cheer them on. Their world was complete without applause. Still, it taught me something. In a human world filled with noise, ambition, and constant distraction, these ants showed me the elegance of silent purpose. No ego, no competition, just function, trust, and rhythm. From the outside, it looked like chaos, but on the inside, it was flawless order. As the colony matured, something fascinating began to unfold, diversity in form and function. The nest, once a uniform sea of identical workers, started to show subtle variation. Some ants grew larger, more robust. Others remained small and nimble. And yet every one of them had a role to play. Nature doesn't waste energy. Evolution had fine-tuned this society to perfection. The differences weren't accidental. They were intentional adaptations hard-coded into their DNA. Larger workers began to take on more physically demanding tasks, guarding entrances, carrying heavier loads, and standing watch when the nest vibrated with unfamiliar movement. They became the colony soldiers, its frontline defenders. I remember one afternoon in particular, I had accidentally tapped the side of the enclosure. Barely a vibration, but enough. Within seconds, a group of the larger ants rushed to the surface, their mandibles wide antennae twitching furiously. They weren't attacking, but they were ready. Standing still, they formed a perimeter, protecting the nest from a threat that never came. It was instinct, not fear. Duty, not hesitation. Meanwhile, the smaller workers focused on detail-oriented tasks, tending the brood, adjusting tunnel humidity, nursing the queen, and maintaining the nest's delicate internal balance. Watching them work was like seeing a living computer run thousands of background processes quietly, efficiently, flawlessly. I started to see personality in their function, not in the way we think of individual identities, but in behavioral rhythms. Some ants were always in motion, darting between chambers with twitchy urgency, Others moved slower, more methodically careful with every step. Not random, not emotion, just programmed brilliance. Even their communication system, those invisible trails of pheromones, took on a richer complexity. I could actually see traffic patterns form and shift throughout the day. Food trails would emerge, grow and fade, replaced by new paths as priorities shifted. It was like watching a living city evolve in real time. At the heart of all this was cohesion without hierarchy. There were no supervisors, no bosses, no meetings. Each ant knew what to do, when to do it, and where. And if one fell behind or died, others seamlessly took its place. No ceremony, no pause, just continuity. It humbled me. As humans, we talk about systems, roles, leadership, and teamwork. But here in a glass box no bigger than a shoebox, I witnessed the purest form of cooperation built not on language or ideology, but on shared purpose. Every ant, no matter its size or role, contributed to the colony's survival. There was no glory, no reward, just purpose, just rhythm. And as I sat quietly watching a soldier ant lift a fallen piece of soil while a nurse ant gently groomed a larva nearby, I realized something. This was society. This was structure. This was unity at its most primal and its most beautiful. The more time I spent with my ants, the more I realized I wasn't just watching insects, I was witnessing a living cycle, an ancient rhythm that had pulsed on this earth long before we ever arrived. It always began the same way a single egg, barely the size of a grain of sand. From that one fragile dot came transformation, a larva, then a pupa, and finally an adult. Each phase, though silent and unseen by most, was filled with change, molting, stretching, hardening a reshaping of identity in complete stillness. When the ant emerged, it wasn't celebrated. There was no applause, no acknowledgement. She simply stood up and began. No hesitation. Her life already had meaning before she took her first step. That cycle repeated hundreds of times. Sometimes I'd lose count. Eggs would appear hatch mature. Workers would age, tire, and vanish quietly replaced by new sisters. 
The colony never mourned. It simply moved forward, driven by purpose and unity. And I, I sat there day after day, peering through the glass, fascinated by the repetition. You'd think it would become boring, watching ants dig feed, care for brood, then do it all again. But it never did. In fact, the more I observed, the deeper my awe became. Because I wasn't just seeing routine, I was witnessing resilience. Each ant played a small part in something bigger. She didn't need to understand the whole picture to know her actions mattered. There's beauty in that kind of trust in giving everything you have to a world you'll never fully see. And it made me think, what if we lived more like them? What if we embraced our smallness, our interconnectedness, and stopped chasing significance in the loudest places? The ants never sought to be more than what they were. And yet in their quiet lives, they built something lasting. Raising ants has given me more than knowledge. It's given me patience. It's reminded me that the smallest lives can teach the biggest lessons. That silence isn't emptiness. That routine isn't monotony. And that true wonder doesn't need to shout. It just needs time, space, and your full attention. So if you've made it this far, thank you. Thank you for walking with me through this tiny world for slowing down enough to see the magic hidden in soil and shadows. And if you're as fascinated by life's overlooked stories as I am, I invite you to continue this journey. Subscribe to The Wanderer's Saga, where we explore nature's quiet miracles one small story at a time. Hit that bell so you never miss an episode, because sometimes the smallest things have the biggest stories to tell.